Well, there's some problems with the theory that the planets came out of the sun. It turns out that the sun contains 99.86% of all the mass of the solar system. We, we see these little models of the sun and the planets. We fail to appreciate the size of the sun in contrast to all the planets put together. See, all the planets put together are, what, 15 hundredths of a percent of the mass of the solar system. You know, when I'm talking about the solar, I'm not talking about our whole galaxy. I'm talking about our sun and the planets go around the sun. Okay. Now, even though the sun has 99.86% of the mass, it contains only 1.9% of the angular momentum. Now, what on earth is angular momentum? Momentum is someone's mass times velocity. If you, if you push somebody on a skateboard, it takes some energy to get them going. But once you've got them going, he'll coast until the friction or whatever catches up. When you talk about something spinning, there is also momentum. It's not, it's not linear, it's angular momentum. You see this exemplified with a skater. You've all seen ice skaters or roller skaters that will do a twirl with something extended, their hands or something, and as they bring, bring that weight in closer to them, they spin faster. They actually are, there's, they're not gaining energy, they're really transferring that energy in a different way. The energy that uh, uh, started them in the turn with their hands, say, extended, is going slower. When they bring that weight closer in, in order to conserve the principle of angular momentum, they spin faster. And uh, often in the physics class, some schools will have a, a, a chair that's on a, on a, you know, on a basis on a piece of plywood so you can hold it down, but the, the chair is a spin chair, and they'll typically be two, give you two bricks. And have you put your, hold your arms out, sit in the chair, and they move you very slowly. In fact, that's why they don't do too often, because you're tempted to do more. Go very, very slowly and says, okay, put the, put the bricks in your lap. As you bring, put them in your laps, it scares the dickens out of you because you really wrap up pretty fast, even though it can be moving very slowly at first. It's a demonstration of angular momentum. But you've all seen it in skaters and so forth. Well, see, the problem is the sun contains only 1.9% of all the angular momentum. The nine planets contain 98% of the momentum. They're further out, not closer in. That makes it even more... Exaggerated. Do you follow me? Now, by the way, this all was known during the days of Laplace. And so uh, that, that, that's one of the reasons he's sort of indicted by his endorsement, because he obviously hadn't thought it through. He did it, and we've all done that, I suppose, given an endorsement without really checking things. But um, there is no plausible explanation that can support a solar origin of the planets. People have tried, and nothing really holds up. And uh, now, um, James Jeans, now we're moving a century ahead later, pointed out that the outer planets are far larger than the inner ones. That alone is bizarre. You would expect it to be the other way around. Almost, uh, 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 Jupiter is 5,750 times as massive as Mercury, and almost 3,000 times as massive as Mars and so forth. And so this is also a difficulty, even with the current theories. They don't really face these things. There are some other enigmas. As we examine the planets carefully, we discover something weird. They are in pairs. There are three pairs of rapid spin rates among our planets, each within 3% of each other. And uh, as you look at these, they're, 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 they're not necessarily next to each other, but there's always a pair that have about the same spin rates, within 3%. Earth and Mars have the same spin rates. Jupiter and Saturn have the, roughly the same spin rates. And Neptune and Uranus have the same spin rates. And to someone that's just investigating with an open mind, you can't help but wonder why. That implies that there's some relationship with these and these things are not necessarily adjacent to each other. Earth and Mars also have virtually identical spin axis tilts. They both have about 23 and a half degree tilt, both Earth and Mars. And uh, why? You see, what this leads to is a belief by some uh, cosmologists that um, from the angular momentum issues, and from the orbital calculations, 
it would seem to appear that three pairs of these planets may have been brought here from elsewhere. How might that have happened? Well, because a comet that has a lot of mass in some other system might catch two of the planets in that system and as it passes by here, deposit them. There are mathematics that would suggest that. It would, and if that's true, it, look, it would seem that on three different occasions, three different occasions, there were a pair that did this. Now, these these aren't necessarily provable conjectures, but there isn't any reasonable explanation to explain how they happened unless they just happened. Okay, and that's that's a cop out too. Well, God just did it that way. Okay, maybe He did, or maybe there's much more history here than we have no idea. But there's another question as you talk about Mars and so forth. Mars has craters on it. Have you ever noticed that? By the way, let's just back up. There's another concept here that I think we've talked about, but let's get it out too. The common belief, the common teaching in schools, and I'm talking about colleges, not just high schools, is that things, have always, things are uniform. They're just the way they've always been. Well, that sounds pretty good until you get a pair of binoculars and look at the moon. Look at the moon. It's beat up. You know, and, and also, as we send space probes to all the other planets in the solar system, they all have these craters. You quickly come to the conclusion that our solar system is a rough neighborhood. Okay? But when you look at Mars, here's something that most people don't realize. Mars has 93% of its craters on just one hemisphere. And that, in fact, and only 7% in the other it creates the impression that most of those craters happened within a half an hour. What does that imply? The main point, we don't, we, we, no way we can, it's, it's, we, don't need to, we do not need to indulge in conjectures about that. The point it does tell us, though, is it leads us to a, a family of views called catastrophism. You'll discover that scientists that specialize in cosmology of this kind fall in two categories. The common dictum is that things are uniform, that whatever's happening has always happened that way. There's another group that say just the opposite. We see evidence all over of catastrophic changes. And they, they don't necessarily, they're not necessarily biblically oriented people, although most biblically oriented thinkers are in that category because of Noah's flood, because of all kinds of catastrophes we know about from the scripture. We know that this world hasn't always been the way it is. And so um, now about 80% of the uh, craters appear to have occurred within a single half hour. So that's kind of exciting. Strangely enough, we're going to talk a little bit about this when we get to Genesis chapters 6, 7, and 8 with Noah's flood because there, there are some scientists that believe the planet Mars had a role in uh, Noah's flood. But we had mentioned Mars. I want to talk a little bit about that. That's the fourth major planet from the sun. It's named after the Roman god of war, right? Mars means war. That's why we speak of martial arts, right, and so forth. That's, we still use those terms. And uh, what's interesting that most early civilizations were terrified of Mars. Many of them worshipped Mars. When you read about Baal in the Old Testament, it can mean heavenly bodies in general, but very often it appears to specifically be talking about the planet Mars. The Baal of the Old Testament, 2 Kings 23.5, well, lots of places. You've all run into that before. The question is why? You and I are arguably more sophisticated in terms of space with, since we have our astronauts visit the moon and you know, we, we've lived in a culture in which it would consider itself very sophisticated with regards to space. But I'll bet you there isn't anyone in this room, or let's say very few people in this room, that could go outside and point out the planet Mars. Now, just recently, in the last few months, it, it's been closer to the Earth than it's been in a long, long time. So it's been in the news a bit. But even with all that, unless you've done a little reading and got some coaching, you wouldn't know where to look for it, right? And yet the ancient cultures were terrified of Mars. You see, something doesn't compute here, does it? Well, there are some alternative views. The uniform, uniform terramans I mentioned, they cling to the presumption that things have remained essentially unchanged over billions of years. We reject that for lots of reasons. The catastrophists say that the universe has been subjected to a series of catastrophic events, 
And fiat creations, are, that's us, are included in this view, people who believe that creation came by the word of God and so on. that uh, uh, started them in the turn with their hands, say, extended, is going slower. When they bring that weight closer in, in order to conserve the principle of angular momentum, they spin faster. And uh, often in the physics class, some schools will have a, a, a chair that's on a, on a, you know, on a basis on a piece of plywood so you can hold it down, but the, Well, there's some problems with the theory that the planets came out of the sun. It turns out that the sun contains 99.86% of all the mass of the solar system. We, we see these little models of the sun and the planets. We fail to appreciate the size of the sun in contrast to all the planets put together. See, all the planets put together are, what, 15 hundredths of a percent of the mass of the solar system. You know, when I'm talking about the solar, I'm not talking about our whole galaxy. I'm talking about our sun and the planets go around the sun. Okay. Now, even though the sun has 99.86% of the mass, it contains only 1.9% of the angular momentum. Now, what on earth is angular momentum? Momentum is someone's mass times velocity. If you, if you push somebody on a skateboard, it takes some energy to get him going. But once you got him going, he'll coast until the friction or whatever catches up. When you talk about something spinning, there is also momentum. It's not, it's not linear, it's angular momentum. You see this exemplified with a skater. You've all seen ice skaters or roller skaters that will do a twirl with something extended, their hands or something, and as they bring, bring that weight in closer to them, they spin faster. They actually are, they're, they're not gaining energy, they're really transferring that energy in a different way. The energy, 